bad stuff happened here. No, 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 no. So I'm a massive fan of the Dead Space series and with Visceral Games having been closed down by EA because of course EA does what EA does, there was little hope of a new game in that franchise, well at least at the time. Now when I found out that Glenn Schofield and a number of other employees from Visceral went on to start a new studio and began work on the Callisto Protocol, I was no doubt pretty excited. A spiritual sequel to Dead Space perhaps? Well, it sure looked that way from all the trailers I'd seen. So the game came out about a week ago from the making of this video and I've had a chance to play through what really was my most anticipated title of the year and here are my thoughts. The story revolves around an event that has happened on the Black Iron Prison Colony located on Callisto, one of Jupiter's moons. As usual I'm not going to go into any specifics about the story since that's spoiler territory but as alluded to in the trailers already, bad things were done and there were consequences. Now while the story is not particularly original, the voice acting was good and it's enough to drive the experience forward. The issue I had is that you don't really get to know any of the characters during the course of the game. And a large section of the game, say for the end segments, is basically very light on filling in the story as well. Most of the time it's go here and get over there because we need to escape. And as a result of this, I didn't really feel I was actually discovering anything meaningful about what happened on my way to the end of the game. What compounds this issue is that there are very few collectible logs and other information compared to something like Dead Space. The logs themselves are all very short and barely add any background information or fill me in on the lore of the location or the background events leading up to what was currently going on at the station. There was also little in the way of environmental storytelling, dead bodies, a few scribbles on some walls and general chaos in each location is certainly not enough to tell a story. In comparison to something like Dead Space, Dead Space 2, System Shock, Prey and the like, the backstory lore and environmental storytelling here just does not feel particularly fleshed out and I think it hurts the experience and atmosphere overall. It's even more of a surprise since the five part audio series Helix Station which was released before launch was great and had tons of atmosphere. I was expecting the same, if not more, from the actual game, but it just wasn't there and was somewhat disappointing to say the least. There's also a fair amount of jump scares throughout the game, unfortunately most of them didn't really land for me either. The game is also pretty short and can be completed in, I would say, 8 or 9 to 12 hours or less, depending on how fast you play. Visually the game is stunning, there is no doubt about that, the character models are some of the best I've seen this year, everything is motion captured which obviously adds to the believability of each sequence. The environments are also well done, the overall visual atmosphere was good, but wasn't disturbing or scary nor did it convey a sense of dread or horror, unlike Dead Space which had that in spades. The enemy design is decent, they're adequately horrid I suppose, but they're not nearly as disturbing as the necromorphs were in Dead Space. Audio is equally good and impactful, combat as a result hits hard and you can always hear where the enemies are and when they are crawling through the vents to jump out at you. The music as well is adequately fitting in helping creating the atmosphere of the game. And while these aspects of the game are high quality, these alone do not make a good game. And it seems that they focus so much on these parts that they forgot to add the backstory, the lore or flesh out some of the gameplay mechanics which I'll talk about now. The Callisto Protocol is a third person action horror game more than it is a survival horror game and is mainly focused on melee combat with some ranged combat thrown in. Hold left or right to dodge an attack, it doesn't really matter which one, then hold the opposite direction to dodge the next attack. Now some enemies attack twice and some enemies attack three times after which you can then do a melee combo followed up by a quick shot with whatever weapon you are currently using and then rinse and repeat. You can do a perfect dodge which slows down time a little but it was very inconsistent and honestly felt like it made no actual difference regardless. There is also an ability to block as well but you still take damage. So I didn't actually use block at all since dodging was easy enough and negated damage entirely and I saw no point in upgrading blocking at all. The enemy variety is also a little sparse and you'll fight almost all of them the same way as described above, albeit with some slight different attack patterns. As you progress enemies get a little harder in that after taking some damage tentacles appear in the neck or the chest, you are then required to shoot these tentacles else the enemy will transform into a stronger version of that enemy that does more damage and has more health. 
So they can kill you quickly if you're not careful, but fighting them is exactly the same as fighting any enemy outlined above. It just takes a little bit longer. There is stealth in the game as well, so if you sneak up behind an enemy without them seeing you, you can execute them to save you some time. Later in the game, a new enemy is introduced which relies on sound, and these sections are essentially stealth sections, I suppose. Uh, unless you feel like a big fight, it's probably best to remain silent. Although for some strange reason, they don't hear the loud execution even when it's relatively close by to them, or you stomping corpses to get loot, or because apparently that doesn't make any sound. Regardless though, even if these enemies are alerted, they are easy enough to deal with unless you are horribly outnumbered, but most of the time you can just throw them into spike because they're all conveniently placed around the level. There is also a lack of weapon variety. There's a melee weapon, a pistol, a mini shotgun, aka skunk gun, a tactical pistol, a shotgun, and finally an assault rifle. Now both the mini shotgun, the skunk gun, and the pistol share the same base, and as does the riot gun, and the riot shotgun, sorry, and the assault rifle. Now what this essentially means is that you can't just quickly switch from the right shotgun to the assault rifle for example. And you'll need to remove the shotgun attachment and then connect the assault rifle attachment to be able to use the weapon. And the same goes for the pistol and the skunk gun. It's certainly not ideal and the way they've chosen to do this makes the limited weapon variety seem even more limited. All these weapons also use different ammo so you are going to need to choose what you're going to use and upgrade since inventory space is going to be a problem for at least half the game. Of course it's entirely possible to change the attachments mid-battle but it's not the most efficient method since you'll be trying to perform these actions while avoiding the enemies that are attacking you. It's simply easier to use whatever weapon you currently have selected and switch to the other weapon you have set up if you run out of ammo in your magazine. It's generally faster than reloading. As I said earlier though, the combat has weight, impact and it feels great. It's enjoyable for sure, and in addition, it's also pretty gory with the ability to crack open heads. However, it does get repetitive because you are going to be dealing with almost all the enemies exactly the same way throughout the entire game as I outlined at the beginning of this section. Another issue is that the dodging can be a little finicky with more than one or two enemies at the same time, which is actually quite frequent. Uh, you get a GRP glove as well, it's similar to the gravity gun in Half-Life 2 and telekinesis in dead space. You pick up and throw objects, exploding canisters for example, as well as enemies. It's quite strong and you can make many encounters rather trivial since you can just throw enemies into the many conveniently placed wall spike and occasional machines. The GRP does have a charge that so will run out after a few uses and then you'll need to recharge it or use a battery pack. Also the presence of all these wall spikes in any location give away any surprises that could be had there because if you see them or a room with dangerous looking machinery you know you are going to be attacked once you reach a certain location or you hit a switch or something like that. Uh, by the way who put all these wall spikes around the place anyway and why? All the weapons can be upgraded with the Callisto credits you find throughout the game at reforge stations. Uh, there are a number of these upgrades for every weapon, but all the guns follow the same formula. More ammo, more damage, more stability, and an alternative fire that uses more of the ammo when you fire it. Did I mention there are a ton of crawl spaces? Uh, these hidden loading screens, sorry I mean crawl spaces, are scattered throughout the game, and you'll encounter these very frequently, very frequently indeed. Your inventory is also very limited for what seems like half the game until you get your space suit. Uh, so you'll have 6 slots until then, uh, at which point it goes to 12. Um, so you'll need to pick and choose what you can keep and what you are going to discard. There are a few encounters with large security droids, um, a two-headed mini-boss and a final boss as well. You'll end up fighting this mini-boss four times. It's exactly the same every single time. There are no variations in its attack pattern or visual appearance at all. It's the same boss four times. The only difference is that the three encounters with the additional three encounters with the thing also spawn other mobs, making the encounter a little more complicated. Uh, the combat with the mini boss, no surprise, is identical to fighting any other mob in the game. Dodge, dodge, shoot in the head, rinse, repeat until you kill the first head, and repeat until it's dead. It seems really lazy to just have players fight the same boss four times, perhaps they, I don't know, ran out of ideas. There are a few other things I wanted to mention here as well. The tutorial is pretty invasive, it pauses the entire game and fills the screen with a big image with some text, trying to teach you how to play. It's obnoxious and it's unnecessary and it interrupts the gameplay. Thankfully, you'll only ever have to see it once. Upgrading the stun button also doesn't change its visual appearance at all, unlike some of the other weapons. While this is not game breaking, obviously, it seems odd since it's the most used weapon in the game and 
It's nice to have some visual feedback when you upgrade some stuff in a video game. There's also no FOV slider, so you're stuck with your character taking up a massive portion of your screen, and there's also no way to switch the shoulder camera either, leading to some situations that could be avoided because you couldn't see stuff. The game also lacks a new game plus currently. They are releasing it as a free update, I believe, along with a new difficulty in February. Finally, the save system is also a little bit strange. There is an autosave, which saves at specific checkpoints, and this will eventually overwrite previous autosaves. Then there is a manual save function, which just saves whatever your last checkpoint was. If you forget to use it, you will lose the ability to go back to a specific checkpoint or stage if that autosave has been overwritten. The game does not make set saves for the beginning of each chapter on its own, which is strange. The Callisto Protocol launched with some serious issues on PC, massive stutters and performance issues that affected everyone regardless of the system they were running the game on. Thankfully, there was a patch to fix the worst of the stutters within 24 hours, and there was another patch this morning that fixed the remaining stutters. I've not been able to test the performance in the sections where I had drops before, since I no longer have a save game there. The patch notes made no mention of performance fixes this time, so I have to assume that these issues are still present. Ray tracing is still broken visually and also tanks the frame rate if enabled even on top end hardware, so don't turn it on basically. And as far as bugs go, I actually didn't come across any frequent issues that come to mind. I think I had one crash and, and that was about it. The technical issues seem to be purely performance related, at least for me. Some folks are saying that the game does not actually utilize the CPU properly either, which is leading to performance issues. Striking Distance Studio is apparently working on further optimizations. Perhaps a little too late, maybe. I think the damage has already been done by the looks of it. There is certainly no way these developers were not aware of the serious performance and study issues that were present in the PC version of the game. I think it would have been better if they announced immediately that they were aware of issues with the PC port and were working on a fix, instead of waiting until there was a massive negative reception before actually saying anything. So, as I said earlier, I'm not sure the Steam reviews are going to recover anytime soon. You know, it's sad that so many PC games seem to launch in this state these days and that PC versions seem to be very low priority compared to some other versions of games, but I suppose this is the gaming industry these days. Yeah, a little bit disappointing. So is the Callisto Protocol a bad game? No, it's not. Is it an abysmal PC port? Well, it was, but it's better now, though there is still some work to be done for sure. Part of the issue is that the Callisto Protocol is not a Dead Space type horror game, but rather an action game with some horror elements. There was absolutely nothing scary about it at all, and I was especially disappointed since I was looking forward to it, but perhaps I shouldn't be comparing it to Dead Space, perhaps that's unfair. But that is somewhat inevitable, hell they even put in the stomp the dead bodies for loot mechanic and the callback image to Dead Space with the shoot the tentacles image in the video now. But let's set aside Dead Space for a moment. How does the game stand on its own merit? Well, it's visually impressive, the animations are great, the audio is good, and the combat feels good. However, these things don't make up for the deficiencies in the story, the absence of a rich and interesting background. There is no sense of exploration at all because the game is incredibly linear A to B experience. And while the combat feels great, it's very basic, lacks variety, and it also lacks depth. All these things hurt the experience overall, and move it just past the above average to decent category for me, which I hope would not be the case. Look, there's nothing blatantly wrong with the game aside from the technical issues. It just doesn't stand out as anything unique or special in any way. And as a result of that, I just can't wholeheartedly recommend it. It's, it's disappointing and it could have been so much more. If you are dead set on playing the game though, my advice is to wait for a decent sale. Anyway, I think that about wraps up my thoughts for the Callisto Protocol. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the section below. Thanks for watching. I've been Charlie. Until next time.